Everyone loves a good ghost story, right? I got a few ghost stories. In fact, I've got way more than a few stories. How about something more than a story? What if I told you that I have been seeing ghosts my whole life and have five volumes of sketchbooks full of them? What if I told you? This particular story isn't one that I typically share. But I think if I'm going to share anything, he's the one I want to talk about. The number one question that I get is, have I ever seen anything scary? And the short answer is yes. They can be scary and not all of them are people. I wanted to talk about the very first spirit that ever actually scared me. So not like a, oh, like a jump fright, like a bone chilling, terrifying, terrifying, um, like messed my life up for a few years. And you probably, well, if you, if you run the title, you know, but uh, it's the hat man. You probably already know who the hat man is, or I don't think you would have clicked on this video. Um, he's a pretty, famous dude, shadow figure, who instills fear in a bunch of people. People can say exists because it's happened so many times with so many people around the world. Can we call him a man? I don't know. I refer to him as a man. He's a shadow person. He's creepy. He is a phenomenon though. And this is a phenomenon that is relatively modern, supernatural, and has happened around the world no matter the cultural or spiritual beliefs of people. There's even a link to older phenomena happening where people in the past, further past, middle ages, have reported seeing shadowy figures, but they're missing the hat. They have an outline of a cloak. Um, so instantly what comes to mind is a grim reaper figure. I don't know, maybe he upped his fashion as times changed. So yeah, this phenomenon's reported by people all over the world. It's characterized by the appearance of a tall, dark figure wearing a hat, often described as a fedora or a top hat with a wide brim and a long coat. The hat man is typically reported as being male and faceless, although some accounts describe him as having glowing eyes or a sinister grin. Many people who have encountered the hat man describe feeling a sense of fear or dread in his presence. Some report feeling paralyzed or unable to move when they see him, while others have described experiencing vivid nightmares or sleep paralysis after encountering the hat man. While the origins of the Hatman phenomena are unclear, some researchers have speculated that it may be linked to various cultural beliefs and legends. Others have suggested that it may be a manifestation of a larger phenomena known as shadow people. Some experts suggest that this experience may be linked to sleep paralysis, which is a common sleep disorder that can cause people to experience vivid hallucinations and paralysis while falling asleep or waking up. A theory of my own that I haven't been able to really find on the internet anywhere. I mean, I even dug through the Reddit threads that there could be some type of connection with the idea of the Grim Reaper, right? A ferryman. Think of Greek mythology. People or beings that are responsible for bringing souls to the next place to help them travel through. I think that that could possibly be why he makes us feel so terrified. It, you know, that could be a comment on death, but I don't know. I really do not know. I also think it would be really interesting, the psycho, like the psychological I'm also really interested in seeing if there's been any more studies psychological wise in the term of some type of primal imprint. So I have heard others talk about how maybe this is like a human collective thing, a consciousness. So what in our consciousness that connects to fear also connects to the silhouette of a hat, right? Like sure, Jack the Ripper, but like even Jack the Ripper, that perfect top hat silhouette isn't the hat man. But I would be really curious if anyone can kind of nail down if there is some type of subconscious thing happening with the collective. Regardless, the hat man's really creepy and I have some creepy stories I want to share with you. My first encounter with him, my first couple of encounters with him, oh, I had to get myself a seat cushion because yes, I am sitting on the floor. I am a floor dweller and I do water. So where was I? Oh, the first time I ever saw the hat man. How can I forget? My first experience ever was actually in college. I was in the painting studio and in the studio, there's this loft and this big window. And I remember looking out and it looks down on a campus lawn. 
with all of these paths that are intersecting, right? They all go towards the different school buildings. And the weirdest thing, middle of the day, there is a man standing in the middle of a crossroad. So a, if you know, you know, but he's standing in the middle of a pathway that crosses like this. And it's directly in front of my building. And he's not looking at me. Um, but it was really weird because, how do I say this? So this was at a time where I did not understand that I had an ability. I thought that I had really bad luck and just happened to grow up and move to and visit haunted places. I thought maybe I just pay attention more than other people or I have really bad luck. I don't know. And so looking down at this man, I can say that he had a physical form. He was not transparent, but he also didn't belong in the field of view. He clearly looked out of place there. He didn't have many features. And honestly, again, this was before I really knew what my gifts were. So I didn't keep any of like my, my sketchbooks that I keep now. So I never, I never drew this experience. This is just from memory from what I can remember. And I remember that people weren't walking through him, but they were walking very uncomfortably close. Like you wouldn't walk that close to just someone on the sidewalk, especially like as a college kid, right? You don't know that person and you're not gonna walk super close to them. So it was like they couldn't see him, but they were still like sidestepping him. It was weird. But I remember calling someone over. I called Chris over to have him look out the window. And I said, can you just look out the window for me? Because I knew something was wrong. Like I, I knew that that wasn't like a real man. Um, and of course, you know, Chris looked within probably five seconds and there was no one there. And I, I looked back and there, there was no one there anymore. But I do remember being so freaked out. And I had this feeling like, oh, that was, in, like, I think that was important. Um, it was kind of like this, you know, I don't know. But it definitely made me think a little bit about um, different things that I've experienced um, close to that time. So fast forward to me being graduated and living with my now husband in our first tiny one bedroom apartment. And it's the middle of the day, Alex is at work. And again, very small apartment. There's one fairly large, like a good size window, if you can see it, good size window um, in the living room. And we were on the top floor. So it was looking down at our parking spaces um, and then a tree line. And so we could see our cars back there. And I was just walking around the house. And you know, when you see something in the corner of your eye and you turn to look, and typically there's nothing there. I had to pause for water. Well, I turned and looked and there, there most definitely was someone there. And standing directly down from my window is the same man, tall, lanky, older, wide brim hat, nicely dressed, thousand yard stare. Um, he wasn't looking at me. He was, I saw his profile, um, but I still froze. I looked at him and again, broad daylight. There was no like obscuring or anything like that. I, I froze. And I was instantly, the only way I can explain this feeling is my bones were so cold that they hurt. Like to me, that is what real fear feels like. Um, or like a different, mm, there's so much I could say now, but I don't, I wanna try to focus on the story. It's like my bones ache and I wasn't frozen. I wasn't paralyzed, but like when you see something, right? That should not be there. I know we're always yelling at the movie to like, don't go upstairs, don't open that door, don't answer that phone call. But like, 
If you're like me, yeah, you would. I am a curious person, okay? I have ADHD. I can't help it. I want to know. I have such a hunger for knowledge. But like, you're going to want to look. I wanted to look. I didn't want to. I don't know. I can't explain it, right? It's like the car crash syndrome where you're driving on the highway and like, we in Pittsburgh, we call it rubbernecking. Like, you're going to look. But this time, instead of it feeling like he's so disconnected from me, it was like, so the first time I saw him, it was like I was seeing something I shouldn't see, like some type of veil. I was seeing through it, but he didn't know I was seeing through it. And this time, it was like, I knew before he turned his head that he saw me. And I saw him turn his head slowly. Again, all of this feels like, like when I recall it, this experience feels like it was like a half hour. It was probably only like a few minutes, but he turned and he stared directly into my eyes. And of course I stared back because I'm like frozen and I am frozen in fear at this point. He's looking at me, I'm looking at him. He knows I can see him. I know that he can see me. I am terrified. And past my fear, I could just tell that he was confused. Like he looked at me like, like what? Like this isn't supposed to happen. And it's, it's not that his guard was not down at all. I do not want to take that away from him. But he did give the feeling that I wasn't supposed to see him and he was confused. Um, but he kept his scary face up the whole time. I mean, he was scary as ever. I don't know, like I said, it feels like, it feels like this lasted so long. Um, but it was probably just like a minute or two. And I blinked and he was gone. My husband came home sitting in the same exact spot on the couch, in silence. When he came home, I could not bring myself to tell him what had happened. And that never happens. Like, I, I overshare. I tell him, and especially with him, I tell him everything. But I couldn't tell him. I was so shaken <laughs> to the bone. And I, I can't remember how, but I think it was one of those weird synchronicities where, like, I just so happened to see, oh, I remember what it was. It was on Hulu. It was the documentary about shadow people or about night terrors. But the thumbnail was the hat man. And I remember seeing it and being like, cause I had no idea. I had no idea this was a phenomenon. I had no idea other people had seen him. So watching that and it's creepy like to this day i haven't watched it in a few years but i do, i just remember it being well done for what it was and pretty creepy and part of me was so enticed that other people had this experience i wanted to know more but a part of me was really frustrated because my experience with him was so different than anyone else, any, any story I had access to at that time. When I'm trying to find information, especially anything dealing with the supernatural, when I want that information, I cannot find it. I could Google and rephrase any way I want to, and I will not find that information, but it will magically just pop up at random times, <laughs> typically when I'm not even thinking about it anymore. And then it's like, oh, here's all this info. I completely forgot this part. Like I have to pause because we need to talk about this part. So if it was a dream, it was one of those dreams that like you could control. You know, whenever you're someone like wakes you up, you're like, <gasps> and it's like super quick, like no warning. I had felt someone basically grab me. It's the only way I can explain it. Grab me and pull me out. Could feel someone really close to my face. And a tap on my forehead and an old man's voice. And with each tap, it was, let me in. <sighs> wow. 
when I tell you, I feel like I keep saying this was the scariest moment. This was the scariest moment. Now, this obviously lines up with sleep paralysis, if you know anything about sleep paralysis. Um, being, it being hard to move, feeling that pressure on your chest. Um, so that's probably what I was definitely experiencing with sleep paralysis. Whether it was him or not, I had never had an experience like that. And if you listen back to, I believe it was my last video about sleep paralysis, um, I talk about waking up many, many times in the middle of the night to see spirits around, but I was never paralyzed. Freaked out, but never that anxiety feeling. And I hope that you have never experienced them and hopefully you never will. Finally snapped out of the sleep paralysis. And I never talked to anyone about that experience until very later on. And I'm gonna pause right there because I do have a few more um, stories about the happy end, some current ones, but I want to first go into what is he? Hi, so I'm editing the video that you may have just saw or about to see. I don't know where I'm going to put this one, but I had to show you because I realized I need some type of intro. Girl needs a catch, right? So that you can actually, someone will click on this damn video. So I pulled out my actual sketchbooks and I realized that I never emphasized and it's in the description, but if y'all are like me and you have ADHD, you ain't reading that description. These sketchbooks from the intro of the video are real books that I've had since I was a teenager. Some of them are newer than other ones. And this one that, you know, says one on it is the very first one. And I don't know why it didn't occur to me last night to actually use the sketchbooks where these stories are being recalled from um i'll try to work on that i guess for the next one but i had to show you so my hat man sighting right is one of my first sightings that i can remember really really well and that i i documented by drawing it um i'm an artist and drawing it is the only way to make sense of when i have weird things happen to me so i but i had to show you this because i think i've drawn a lot of creepy versions of the hat man um to like express how he makes me feel but my very first drawing of him <laughs> is amazing and it really puts into perspective of where my head was so this ladies and gentlemen is the very first drawing i ever drew of the hat man when i saw him and because I'm recording this myself, um, it might be backwards, but that text up there, that says, uh, the tall man, a bitch ass. Sometimes, Chelsea, there's things in this world that we just can't explain. 